Hello, my name is John Broadwell, and I'm an independent consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated, focusing on medical device development and embedded system software. I'm also the creator of the Serial Wombat Open Source Project. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Serial Wombat 18AB chip's ability to drive WS2812BN compatible LEDs. A single pin is used to drive the WS2812, and more than one pin can be attached to more than one LED strip. The pins used on the Serial Wombat 18AB chip need to be enhanced performance pins. We'll talk about that a little bit more going forward. This video is being created prior to the release of the Serial Wombat 18AB chip. Uh, and so it's possible that slight modifications are necessary or that there's a mistake somewhere in this video. YouTube no longer allows us to add annotations to the video, so please check the text below for any cre uh, corrections or minor changes since this video was created. As always, please check to make sure that you have the latest firmware for the Serial Wombat 18AB chip and the latest Arduino library. Uh, you can see how to do that in the Serial Wombat 18AB Getting Started video, which I'd recommend you watch if you haven't already before proceeding with this video. As we go through these examples, uh, you'll see me using lots of different interfaces of the WS2812B, uh, WS2812 class, and all of those are documented at Broadwell Consulting Inc. GitHub.io slash Serial Wombat Ardlib. And if you go to classes, class list, and coming down here to Serial Wombat WS2812B, hit the more right here, you'll get a detailed description of all of the interfaces, their parameters, uh, you know, and and how to use the class. This this reference along with the examples should pretty much tell you everything that you need to know. Uh, I'm a big fan of making sure that all of the documentation is complete before I release uh, something to the general public. Let's take a look real quick at the circuit that we'll be using. Here we can see the circuit we're using today. We've got a Serial Wombat Serial 18AB chip. It has its two bypass capacitors, the 10 microfarad uh, core capacitor, two pull-up resistors on the I squared C bus, a pull-up resistor on the uh, reset pin, and a disconnected address pin, so it'll come up as address 0x6b. We're going to use a, a Node MCU clone to run our Arduino sketch on, and we have a WS2812B array, 16 LEDs, that are attached to power and ground. We're providing it with 3.3 volts coming off of the Arduino, so we'll want to be a little bit careful with that. Each of these LEDs can pull uh, up to about 30 milliamps, so if we turn them all on at one time at full blast, that would be half an amp, which is more than we probably want to draw off of the little voltage regulator here. Uh, but we're powering our circuit with that, and we're connected via clock and data to I squared C again with the pull-ups. We can see here that we're simply lighting up the LEDs in order on this particular strip. The way that this one is wired, it starts here, snakes around. If I was laying out the chip, I probably could have, would have made it go in rows and columns to make it a little easier on the software people, but I understand why they did it. There's a data in on each LED and a data out, and they just tied them together in a way that was convenient for the board designer. Let's take a look at the sketch that's generating these LED colors and see how it works. The initial LED walking sequence that we saw is designed to be used as a test sequence and is built into the Serial Wombat 18AB firmware. You can find a sketch to drive it under Examples, Serial Wombat, SW18AB, WS2812, First Test. And that'll pull up this sketch right here. We include Serial Wombat.h, we instantiate a Serial Wombat class, and a Serial Wombat WS2812 class that we say is on this Serial Wombat chip. We'll determine which pin we're going to connect our WS2812 array to. In this case, we'll be using pin 15. That's one of the pins 
that has to have enhanced digital performance because we're going to use the internal spy module and the DMA to drive this. Uh, you can see in this diagram right here that each of the pins that has a dot in it is an option. These are enhanced digital performance pins. We're going to set the user buffer index. The WS2812 driver uses a good chunk of RAM out of the user buffer that's an 8K buffer available on the Serial Wombat chip itself. It has to queue up the various signals to go out to the WS2812 LED set before it sends them, that it enables the SPI and the LED to send them. Uh, so we're going to go into setup. We'll start up our I2C bus. We'll start up Serial. We'll delay for 500 milliseconds, make sure those things are ready to go. We'll use the new find method on the I squared C address to find one. Uh, if not, if it's not found, it'll show an error on the serial. So make sure you open that up. Otherwise, we'll begin with the I squared C bus and the chip that we found. Then we'll simply call WS2812 with the pin number that we're using, the number of LEDs that make up our array, and the uh, user buffer index that we declared up above. If you're not familiar with the user buffer on the Serial Wombat uh, 18AB chip, then there's another video on that. You, you can watch that here. Uh, and then we're going to say the mode for the WS2812 is the chase mode. And that's all it takes. If you notice in the loop code, there's nothing happening here. So once we enable this loop, the Serial Wombat 18AB chip is doing all of the color selection, clocking out the, I would call it an animation, but clocking out the time between LED lights and pretty much taking care of everything without any additional help from the host. This is a great starter sketch because you should be able to open this example change the pin number to the pin that you're using with your array and uh, see this example. One of the things uh, to note is that the WS2812 LEDs can pull a lot of current. And so make sure that you're powering them correctly. It's not reasonable to turn on all the lights on a 16 LED display at full brightness and power that from the power supply that comes off of your Arduino. You're going to either overload the, the voltage regulator on the Arduino, or if you suppress 500 milliamps, which is pretty easy with 16 LEDs or more, uh, you could exceed the power supply available through a USB. So if you're running a lot of LEDs, run it off a separate power supply. The next sketch that we're going to look at is also under examples, and that is the set colors example. So it's nice to be able to set various colors on your LED display. That's pretty much what they're there for. So we're going to take our 16 LED display and display red, white, green, blue, yellow. We'll turn one of the LEDs off. Purple, blue, 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 red, green, white, white, yellow, green. And I just picked these arbitrarily. Uh, again, we're hooked up to pin number 15. Our number of LEDs is 16. We're going to use the same buffer index. I declared my own colors here, uh, basically because I wanted to reduce the power. You know, if you're familiar with RGB colors, they, they range from zero to 255. Uh, and so a red normally would be 0XFF, 255 for full blast red. Uh, we're going to go down to 0F, essentially 1 16th of the typical power, so that we can turn on all of these and not overload the power supply. If I had it hooked up to a separate benchtop supply, providing 3.3 to 5 volts on the power in on the LED uh, array, then I would go full power. So we've declared these just Serial Wombat Red, Serial Wombat Green, and so on. And again, the setup is quite simple. Uh, start up the I2C, find your Serial Wombat chip, uh, start up the WS2812, and then we're just going to write. And the first parameter here is the LED number, and the second parameter is the 32-bit uh, color code. And so we go through we write these 16 LEDs, and that's it. Again, nothing in the loop. 
So let's upload that now and see the result. And here is the result. Let's change our exposure a little bit so that we can more clearly see those colors. And you can see as I go, I'm up to a, a 1 350th of a second uh, shutter speed. You can actually see the chips PWMing. To my eye, I don't see that flicker, but uh, to the camera's very rapid shutter speed, you can see it. So if we do a comparison, again, we see exactly what we expected. Red, white, green, blue, yellow, off, purple, blue, 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 red, green, white, white, yellow, green. But again, they snake through the LED uh, array, which is why that initial walking bit is also useful. It's got a pause in it so that you can clearly see uh, what the first LED in your array is, what the last LED is, because you may buy these often off of an auction site or off of Amazon. They don't come with any data sheets. They're just a bunch of LEDs that somebody soldered to a board. So you don't know which one's first, last, what order they come in. You know, you may get a ring. You don't know if it's clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever. So the walking bit is a very useful example. And then you can base the rest of your software uh, on the order that you see with the walking bit example. The next example is WS2812 animation. This shows how to download uh, a number of frames. A frame is a list of all the LEDs that are available and what colors they should be, along with a delay. It allows you to download a number of frames into the Serial Wombat chip's user buffer and have the Serial Wombat chip clock those uh, LED frames out automatically without any additional help from the host. So for this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set up the WS2812 array on the pin 15. We're going to go down to three LEDs because we're going to be simulating a, a green, yellow, red uh, traffic light. You could use something like this if you wanted to have a constantly running animation, say on a train, a model train set where you had uh, stoplights. So again, we'll declare our own colors with minimal brightness to limit the amount of power that we pull. Uh, we're going to define the number of frames that we have. We only need three frames, red, yellow, and green as three. And then here are our frames, the number of LEDs and the number of frames. And we're going to say uh, off, off green for the first frame, off, yellow, off for the second frame and red off off for the third frame. So our setup looks pretty much the same as it did before. Uh, one thing that you will note is now we're using, we're putting two separate areas into the user buffer. The first one is the uh, area that the pin mode itself needs in order to construct the raw data to send out to the LED array. But then we also need a place to put our animation frame uh, up here. WS2812 class provides a method read buffer size. After you've configured it, if you call this, it will tell you how many bytes of user RAM it had to use in order to construct the frame assembly buffer. And so you'll want to take that. We declared our index again at zero. And so the next free memory after that is going to be at zero plus whatever this method returns. So that's our offset. So we're going to call this method then write animation user buffer uh, with the index plus offset. That's the next free address and the number of frames. Then what that does is it tells the class, okay, when you do an animation, you're looking to this address to get the data. And it's going to be made out of three frames, then loop back to the beginning. So then we're going to upload the individual frames. For i equals zero, i is less than number of frames. Upload the animation frame. The first parameter is the frame number. The second parameter is the three byte array. Then we're going to tell it for each frame, 
I want you to delay 500 milliseconds before showing the next frame, which is fine. That's much faster than a traffic light, but we don't want to wait minutes in this video to watch it change. However, a traffic light spends a lot of time in green, a lot of time in red, and very little time in yellow. So the second frame, which is index one, it's zero, one, and two. Let's make that one much shorter. We'll make it only a thousand. And you can see that in the animation over here uh, that we go green for five seconds, then yellow. In the video here, it looks almost white. That's a byproduct of the way that the LEDs are shining into the camera. To your eye, it looks more yellow. And then uh, five seconds at red. Then it cycles through the, the array again and goes back to green. And then finally, after we've loaded all the data, we say set the mode of the WS2812 class to animation. And again, you can see there's absolutely nothing going on in real time here. Uh, if you look, I will actually disconnect the uh, I squared C lines from the Serial Wombat chip. And as you can see, the animation continues running. It is literally using no CPU time off of the Arduino, which entirely frees your sketch to do other things rather than worry about a repetitive clocking out of data for this animation. Next, let's take a look at a sketch that exploits a feature that is uh, new in the Serial Wombat 18AB firmware, uh, the ability to share a public data number between pins. We'll go to File, Examples, Serial Wombat, 18AB, WS2812, and choose Bar Graph. And this sketch works very much the same way as the others, except we're going to declare an analog input on pin 0. And we're going to connect that analog input up to a potentiometer. And now, instead of setting our mode to, oh, looks like I got to make that a, a keyword so it comes up the right color. Uh, instead of setting the, the mode to one of the pre existing modes, we're going to say, here's your bar graph. The data source, what's the data source, is source pin zero. The number of LEDs, in this case, we're going to be using the 16 LED display, or we could use a strip. And the user buffer index is zero, as said before. And what this will do is we're going to say when the, uh, for lights in the bar graph that are off, you could make this zero, but in our case, we'll make them red so that we can see all 16. Uh, the off value in RGB goes here. The on value in RGB goes here. When we look at the data source, in this case, pin zero, which will output a value between zero and 65,535, uh, treat anything below 1,000 as a minimum value. Some pots have trouble getting all the way to their edges. So we'll pull the, the range that we're looking at from 1,000 to 64,000. And uh, then it will light up anywhere between zero and 16 LEDs, zero at a thousand or less, 16 at 64,000 or greater on the pot, and proportionally in between. So let's upload that sketch and take a look at that. So we'll add to our circuit here, attach it to pin zero, and you can see as we turn it, the number of LEDs increases in that snake pattern based on the, the connection. If we turn it in the opposite direction, then the bar graph goes back down. And we can connect this up as a, uh, as a, a strip LED, which makes the bar graph aspect of it much clearer. Now, as we turn the knob, we see the bar graph go across and back. So this is an easy way to show a proportional output using your WS2812 LED strip from one of the other uh, public data on the serial Wombat pins. 
For our final example, let's just take a look at driving more than one WS2812 uh, array. This is similar to our previous examples, but in this case, we're going to declare two separate arrays. And so this previous example up through this point is exactly the same as our animation example. And then we're going to do a begin on the second class that we instantiated. And we're going to tell you this one's on pin 14. It has 16 LEDs. And I want you to put it at address 2000. So, and that's a, a safely high value uh, relative to the offset. You can look at the offset again with the read buffer size, then multiply uh, the frames by uh, five bytes per frame for the delay and the, the, the uh, RGB values. And we'll just go ahead and put that one in the chase mode, the initial test. And this is important just to show that, you know, the Serial Wombat chip can support multiple different arrays and that for the convenience of the programmer, they don't have to be strung one after another, you know, DIO, uh, DO to DI. And we can see here the uh, two different classes are running simultaneously on the Serial Wombat chip. Again, no help from the loop on the Arduino. And one of them is running our animation. The other one is running the chase sequence. You could do two animations. You could do an, a bar graph. You could have one that's just directly controlled by color from your Arduino. You know, uh, basically your limit is strictly the number of LEDs that you can support from a power perspective and the total RAM. It takes 50 some bytes and I'm working on optimizations on that. So that's why I put this read buffer size in there so that I could optimize over time and your sketches would still work if I needed more or less RAM per LED. But figure on 50 some bytes per LED for me to create the sequence. And that seems excessive and it kind of is. But the funny thing is that each byte uh, takes up each LED takes up uh, a couple of bytes per LED to create the sequence. The WS2812 uh, timing is not necessarily super strenuous. There's a fair amount of variation that can go into it, but it is very fast. Uh, four, 400 billionths of a second for a zero, uh, 850 billionths of a second for a one, which is which is pretty fast for a microcontroller to generate in software. So that's why we queue up all of the bits and use the data line on the uh, spy bus data out. There's a video that I did last year when I was making a Fortnite chest for my son uh, that used a whole bunch of WS2812s that explain in detail how I achieved this on the microcontroller, the PIC 24FJ256GA702, uh, that is the heart of the Serial Wombat 18AB chip. Uh, and so if you're interested, you don't have to know how this works. All you have to know is how to use the Arduino libraries. But if you're curious, you know, or if you're looking to borrow some of my open source code to create your own driver on the microchip uh, 24F series PIC, uh, the ones with DMA, then, you know, take a look at these uh, videos here. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you have any questions, you found any bugs, uh, then leave me a comment down below. If you like the video, hit the like button. That's definitely what it's for. Uh, if you're using the Serial Wombat, if you're using the Serial Wombat 18AB in projects, then by all means, please subscribe. Uh, this YouTube channel is how I distribute most of the information uh, about the chip. So you'll be the first to know if it's in your, your YouTube subscribe list. Uh, if you're using the WS2812 class, leave me a note below. I'd love to know what you're up to, how you're using it. If you have suggestions for improvements or interfaces that you think should be in the class, then by all means, let me know. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features to the Serial Wombat. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. 
Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below. Questions sent to John at Broadwell Consulting about the Serial Wombat will not be returned.